Hey guys, welcome to my channel Unusual Creates. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this challenging yet amazing piece of art on a painting that we got from a dumpster. If you want to know how I made this, then please keep watching. This project was a challenge for me because I have never sculpted before and the size of the canvas was kind of massive. I started off by giving this canvas a good cleaning by using a damp cloth. After this, I separated the frame from the painting and kept it aside to be upgraded later. My husband drew an image of Buddha with some lotus stem on it. This would give me an idea of where to place the clay and how to go with the whole project. I started off with the simplest thing and that was the lotus stem. I took a small amount of air dry clay and started to rub it nicely between my palms with some drops of water, making a dough-like consistency. I kept it soft but yet firm so that I could shape it nicely. I made a ball out of it and rubbed it into my palms to make a cylindrical like structure. Then I continued to elongate one of the sides of the cylindrical structure and gave it a pointy head. Then I pressed the lower round part of the clay between my thumb and palm and tried to shape it into a petal. I continued to use small drops of water to make sure that it remains soft and workable. I continued to make the center petal in the same way except for this one I did not elongate the side but extended the center part making it look more like a center petal. Once I had made all the petals, I moved on to make the stem of the lotus. For this, I just rolled the clay between a flat surface and the palm of my hand and sometimes fingers to make a long, thin, string-like structure. Once I finished making the petals and stem, I used some glue to paste the petals and the stem on the canvas. Moving on, I rolled out a thin string from the clay for the ears eyebrows and neck and pasted it with some glue. I made long strings at one go so that I do not have to keep making them separately. I just placed these strings on the drawing and used an exacto knife to cut it according to the length required. Now an annoying part of using air dry clay like this is that it keeps cracking. And when I say cracking, it means horrible cracking. So much so that it can get frustrating to work with it. Don't worry, I will show you a hack of how to get around it. Just keep watching. For making the nose, I used a thick blob of clay in a cylindrical form and started to press it down on the canvas using the image under it as a guide and removing the extra clay. I created a thin edge on the top and flatter at the bottom to make the bridge of the nose. I placed two lumps of clay on either side of the nose for the nostrils and merged these lumps into the main nose and kept building it till I was happy with the shape of it. I used the eraser end of a pencil to make the nostrils. This was like my second attempt at making the nose. For the lower lips, I used a thick, almost cylindrical piece of clay and molded it in the shape of a lower lip. For the eyelids, I made a string out of clay, kept it thin at the ends so that it gives an image of a human eye and pasted them on the canvas. I used the end of a plastic knife to give a gap between the lower and upper eyelid to give an impression of a half-opened eye. Next, I moved on to make the upper lips for which I used two balls, placed it on the picture on the canvas and tried to merge them together in such a way that I get a small bend at the center and gradually thinning it towards the ends. I placed a lump of clay on some glue and continued to spread it making sure that the center was sticking out more just like how a closed human eye would look. Now for hair, I took very small amount of clay, rolled it into a ball, lightly pressed it to make it flat 
and press the end of a pen refill to give an image of hair that we usually see on the images of Buddha. I made these balls in two sizes, some average and some really small ones to be used at the end of the hairline. I used glue to stick them all on the hair that I had drawn. Moving on, for creating the skin on the face, I used two methods. In the first method, I gave a good dough-like consistency to the clay and spread it out to make a sheet out of it. I spread a generous amount of glue on the face. Once I was happy with the thickness of the sheet that I had rolled out, I placed it on the face. My husband helped me in placing the sheet as it was difficult to handle since it kept cracking. After that, I used my hands to spread the sheet on the face, making sure that it was even at all places. I also decided to make a chin by placing a lump of clay at the place of the chin on the image and pressing it, trying to keep it thick at the center and pressing the corners so that it merges with the skin. I realized that my method of making the sheet and putting it on the face for a skin was not a good idea, especially in the view of the amount of cracking that it was undergoing. Hence, for the rest of the face, I decided to work in sections. I did not make sheets this time, but just used a decent amount of clay and glue and small amount of water and tried to spread it on the remaining parts of the face. This, I believe, gave me more control and helped in avoiding cracking. I went back to the lips and used some droplets of water to smoothen the clay down on the lips, making sure to give it a more lip-like structure. I used a plastic knife to give the separation between the lower and upper lips. I used the eraser end of a pencil to make the cupid's bow, making sure that it was exactly between the center of the lips and the bridge of the nose and that it was not very harsh. After making the basic structure, it was time to do something about these cracks. I used spackle for fixing the giant cracks. It's basically putty which is made up of gypsum plaster and glue and is used to fill holes on wood and walls. I used a putty knife to spread it, making sure that I used a generous amount of fit on the cheeks as I wanted to give some dimension to the cheeks and make it look fuller. For places where the putty knife couldn't reach, I used my hands to spread the spackle. Spackle will also act as a glue and hold the clay together, making it more sturdy. Once the spackle was dry, I used a sanding paper in the grid 220 and gently sanded the uneven surfaces. While doing so, it did give me some minor cracks, but I used some cork to fill them in. Cork is again a paste of polymer used to seal joints and cracks. Once I was satisfied with the whole structure, it was time to bring in some color. I started off by painting everything black and yes, I used acrylic colors for painting. Once everything was painted black, I used some yellow gold on a sponge to paint the hair gold. Because the base color was black, painting gold on top of it gave it a more natural metallic look. Next, I used some hot pink to give a base color to the lotus. Once the pink was dried, I used a mix of red and a bit of orange and pink and continued to color the lotus. I tried to give a gradient effect to the petals and colored the top part as pink and the bottom part as a mix of red, orange and pink. I used some green to paint the stem of the lotus. Once I was happy with the colors of the lotus and stem, I moved on to paint the empty canvas space with some copper and for this I used a small sponge. Using a sponge gave it a more uneven coating, making it look more natural and rustic. Once everything was painted, I used some shellac to give it a good gloss and shine and some extra protection. I used a paintbrush this time, unlike my last video of wood burning where I had used a kitchen towel to spread the shellac. This was because the surface that I was working with right now needed minimum pressure and had more curves to deal with. I gave it like a three good coating of shellac. Also, before applying shellac to acrylic paint, Make sure that your paints are completely dry. Lastly, it was time to upgrade the frame. I sanded the frame with sandpaper in the grid 120 and 60. 
I use some pre-stained wood conditioner which will help in avoiding streaks and blotches. Once the conditioner was dry, I used a wood stain in the color red oak and coated the whole frame. Make sure that you wear gloves while staining. Lastly, I finished the frame by giving it a coating of shellac. Once everything was dried, I assembled the frame and canvas and this is how my project looked. My husband and I loved the outcome of this project. We were glad that we decided to keep this canvas and dared to convert somebody's trash into a treasure. Though there were moments where I was frustrated, especially when this thing kept cracking up on us, but my husband's idea of spackle and cork really helped in sealing the whole thing. Let me know what you guys think of my maiden sculpting project. If you guys liked it, then don't forget to hit that like button. Also, please comment, share and subscribe to get updates on my next project. That's it from me. I will talk to you guys next time. Be nice and stay safe.